to start um, lecture 11 off, so this would normally be week 11, um, by talking about endurance. And so this is the start of the adaptations to aerobic training. Um, a lot of what we'll talk about during the first day, a little bit of review, um, and then we'll really get into more of the changes the second half of, of this of this this first day, and then uh, especially on the second day. So to start off, we want to know what is uh, muscular and cardiorespiratory endurance, and then we're going to come back to VO2 max. So to start off, what is muscular endurance? And simply put, muscular endurance is just the ability of a muscle to resist fatigue. Okay, some muscles are better uh, able to do this than others, right? So type one muscle fibers are able to are highly fatigue resistant, whereas type two X um, are, are fatigue very quickly. And so that's what we're talking about. Remember, fatigue is a reversible condition. And then we've got cardiorespiratory endurance. And so that is just, hey, can I sustain exercise? How long can I go for? Um, and then this leads into VO2 max. And we've talked about this a lot, especially in the last week or so. And so VO2 max, um, we, we've got this GIF here um, with this guy. He's on a harness, uh, which we've got in the lab, um, just running. He's breathing through a, a mask in this case that will that's analyzing oxygen consumption, CO2 production. And we can determine how much oxygen he's using. So when it comes to VO2 max, um, it is a measurement of maximal aerobic capacity. Okay. And so what is it? As we've talked uh, several times this semester, it's just the, the maximum or greatest amount of oxygen that the body can use. Now, there are many factors that can affect the maximum amount of oxygen our body can use. Um, and really, if you want to keep it very simple, it's how much oxygen can your uh, body deliver? So think cardiac output. And then how much can your body actually take up into the muscle? Okay, so there's kind of a cardiorespiratory component and a muscular component. As we've seen, um, as workload increases, oxygen in, uh, consumption increases. All right, we've seen that um, several times, especially during the fatigue unit where we had the, the figure that we went over a couple of times. Okay, so at some point, no matter how fit of an individual you are, your oxygen consumption is going to plateau. There's nothing you can do about it. Either you're you're not able to get enough into your muscles, or excuse me, into your body. You're not able to get enough into the bloodstream. You're not able to deliver enough oxygen, or you're not able to take up and use that oxygen. All right. So if we're going to think about this again, kind of simply, we'll get into more detail later on. Um, if we start to train, it's going to increase our VO2 max. And we're talking about aerobic training specifically. So we'll be able to have increased delivery via the cardiovascular system as well as being able to use that via the muscular system. We'll talk about this also later. Um, generally speaking, the respiratory system is not the issue. It can be, but it's not – very rarely is it. Okay, We can get plenty of oxygen into our body and into our bloodstream. Most of us can. Um, however, in some elite athletes – uh, they actually can't get the oxygen from their lungs into the bloodstream. And that's where that transit time thing comes from that we talked about a few weeks ago. So important to know that even as you train, all other things being equal, VO2 for a workload doesn't change. You still have the same oxygen requirement. And we can see that from this figure here. Okay, so we've got uh, speed, which you can think of intensity on the x-axis, and then we've got VO2, and this is relative VO2 because it's standardized um, for body weight. On the y-axis, we've got these two lines, pre-training and then red post-training. And if you notice, the lines are on top of each other until the pre-training one falls out. And remember, we get this little plateau here where, they, where a person can uh, exercise at a higher intensity, but the oxygen consumption is not actually increasing because they've maximized that. And so remember, what's going on here is we're having reliance um, or increased reliance on those anaerobic systems. So yes, anaerobic or excuse me, aerobic training increases submaximal VO2, but it doesn't change the oxygen requirement for a given activity. What happens is, is your heart rate actually ends up being reduced for a given intensity. And so as a result, you hit your max heart rate at a higher workload, which means you can deliver more oxygen, which means you can go longer, further, faster, stronger type of thing. And so that's where we're going to end for this one.